Hi, everybody. Welcome to day two of Amazon's virtual con. I'm Keely from Comixology, and I'm here to introduce a brilliant artist and one of the nicest guys around, Jock. Hey. He'll be drawing for you for the next hour or so, and I'll be uh, asking him any questions that you have from the chat along the way. So let's get started. How's it going? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, good. Good. Thanks. You know, kind of surviving lockdown with deadlines and keeping busy, even though we can't actually like go outside very much. But um, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Good. You've been yeah. keeping busy? Yeah, kind of busier than ever, actually, which is kind of weird. I wish almost, like I think with lockdown, I, I wish either, you know, we didn't have to work at all and then you could just enjoy lockdown and relax or whether, uh, uh, you know, we could right. be busy as normal and, and then go out and go to shows and go to cons. Like, you know, this weekend we'd be at San Diego, right? And I know. And, um, In the beautiful uh, San Diego weather. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, not, it's quite nice here, though. I'm, I'm in the south of England. It's quite, it's quite, quite nice and warm at the moment, so, so it's not too bad. But yeah, you know, kind of missing seeing everyone, missing... I, I, I kind of didn't realise that I'd miss shows so much, actually, because, you know, sometimes when you're kind of up against it with deadlines and stuff, you know, shows can kind of, you know, they're, they're a big chunk of time, you get jet lag when they're in the States and stuff, but it's actually, um, I've really missed them. I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone again at shows. Yeah, yeah. it is a little bit sad and, it, and it's, you know, you forget that that's the place where you see people that you don't normally get to see, like, exactly. You know, yeah. and that's like only like what we see each other at New York Comic Con, like Thought Bubble and basically San Diego and yeah. We're not going to have any of that, so no. Nope. We have to do stuff like this to come together. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so what will you be drawing for us today? Um, well, I was kind of umming, umming and eyeing because I think everyone's bored of me drawing Batman. They've seen me draw Batman a million times. So, um, and I do have a Batman cover that I could that I could be inking. Um, but I thought instead I do uh, I, I do a interior page. I just ink a page. I've got it loosely penciled. I've got, I've got the layout. And is this Lovely. from a create our own book that's not been announced yet, actually, but um, uh, written by a good friend. We've been talking about doing this since actually before Witches. And um, he, uh, we, we, we met in London and, and had a really good chat about it in maybe 2016, I, I think, after kind of talking about doing it. And um, he actually went home and, and unexpectedly wrote the first four issues like that week in, in 2016. Wow. So, um, I'm finally drawing it. Uh, awesome. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, being an artist, unfortunately, you know, you can only sort of take comics wise, you know, really, I, I find I can only do one, one project at a time. Um, um, but I've been doing this most of the year and um, uh, I think it gets announced at, at the end of this year. So yeah, I, I thought I'd ink a page basically rather, rather than doing like another Batman sketch. But um, I support yeah. that. We love Batman, but I support it. Yeah, right. I mean, I adore him, but I think, um, <laughs> You know, there's, I'm getting a bit one note with, with with these live streams, just drawing kind of, you know, basically Batman's really, I know, I know that I can do him quite well, so that, so he's quite useful for this kind of thing, because I know that I'll probably do a half piece yeah. of drawing. But this is a little bit more risky, so, um, so we'll, let's we'll just Let's take a risk goes. today. Let's get crazy. Right? Yeah. Um, all right, so the chat, let's see. Um, Mikey P wants to know what a plant drawing desk, buddy? I don't, I'm not sure what, uh, I guess that's your plant drawing desk. Cool. Uh, uh, we, Jasper yeah. Planine wants to know what projects are you working on. Um, uh, okay, so aside from this, this is this is comics wise. Um, right now, it, it's this, and um, um, then actually, round right about now, sort of, uh, sort of uh, July or August, um, Scott and I have, have got the next arc of witches worked out. And there's been also some some developments with the film and TV side of that, which we're going to be heavily involved with. So um, that's that's pretty exciting. Um, uh, I've just finished doing some drawings for a Netflix show title sequence with um, a company called Antibody that um, contacted me. We've actually been trying to work together for a few years. They, they've off the, over sort of two or three last two or three years. They do like the titles for. Um, Oh man, uh, uh, j just as I kind of try and sound, sound knowledgeable, my mind goes blank. Um, uh, with True Detective, they did. They did True Detective, oh, awesome. Brown, uh, Westworld. They're amazing. Wow. They made really, really beautiful titles. And, um, and uh, the art director from there contacted me a, a few years ago. And finally, like I think it was the fourth time of him trying. 
and luckily I found some time to work with him uh, this year on those so doing so I'm really excited to see what they do with that stuff um, and I think that's about it I've sort of tried to not take on little extra covers and bits and pieces because I have so much so much um, uh, comics work and that really does kind of demand you know your full time really you know it, it's right. great doing sort of little extra covers or kind of you know I've been doing a lot of posters over the years but but um, with, with comics deadlines you kind of need to almost treat it like a full-time job so and I've got this then witches and then another project that I'm writing and drawing which I'm really excited about starting in, in, in the new year and that's gonna basically uh, uh, yeah just be a full-time job so so yeah that's what I'm doing um, and then people are wondering where your beard is <laughs> Because you sent me that you sent me the bearded photo to use. <laughs> now they want to know where my it beard is. and hair have gone. Like you know, it's lockdown. Like what are you gonna do? Like about yeah. three months yeah. ago, me and my son decided to just shave our heads rather than have like ridiculous looking uh, lockdown hair. So yeah, sorry about that for the miss miss uh, miss advertising. Next, but... next next year we'll uh, get the beard up and running. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 grow it back. Like and we'll do this again, and uh, especially for this. Um, and then which character do you wish you could draw that you haven't had the chance to draw yet? Uh, I've been really lucky. I've sort of done them all. Um, I don't mean that to sound crass or anything, but I really have. Um, my first, I, I grew up reading 2000 AD and Judge Dredd over here. And Judge Dredd was my, well, sort of still is my, my favorite character in lots of ways because he, he's the one that I get that kind of nostalgia from, you know, growing up and discovering comics. And, mm -hmm. and um, that, that was my first comics work. And then, you know, the others, you know, there's obvious like Batman, Wolverine, you know, Punisher even. I've done a few pieces for Daredevil. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've been lucky enough that I've sort of worked on all of them um, to a degree. Um, you know, and uh, film wise as well, you know, I've been lucky to do stuff for, for movies as well. And, and there, there was sort of franchises there, but. but, but mm -hmm. um, uh, probably the only one that I was really up for was doing was for Star Wars. Well, the one I heard that they were making new movies, you know, that that was the one kind of like oh, I, I, I would like to get that call. But then luckily I got the chance to work on the Last Jedi as well. So um, you know, right now uh, as you know, it's a bit of a stock answer, but 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 I'm just really excited about, about the, the original stuff um, uh, uh, that we're doing. Um, Although actually next year's project that I'm writing and drawing uh, is a licensed, is a character, is a licensed character. So, um, and I'm really excited about starting that. Um, it's kind of daunting because I haven't written very much, but um, uh, I feel like we've got a really good, strong idea for it. And um, uh, luckily I've kind of got all, all, all this year to sort of, to, to work out the mechanics of the story and work out, you know, the script and everything. So um, I'm, I'm really excited about starting that. But yeah, I've, I've, been, I've, just, I've been lucky. I can't believe the stuff I've got to work on. It's, it's, um, it, it, it's pretty it, it's cool. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we'll start drawing now. People are okay, asking when yeah. the drawing's going to start. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. Sorry, guys. Um, we lo we one, love to chat. <laughs> well, well, and also there is there is one like real problem that I can't draw, uh, uh, draw and talk at the same time. So if I start drawing, uh, please uh, still ask more questions and uh, and maybe we can sort of stop in a minute and get to them and, and I'll um, answer some more. But uh, but yeah, I'll keep you. Off. Feel free to ask some some as I'm as I'm doing it as well. Absolutely. Just, yeah. Um, Okay, so these this is the page. This is uh this is two girls, two 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 sisters, um, and they've they're on an ice planet, and and they've just uh they've just heard a noise over the, over the horizon, and they're trying to work out what it is. So actually, there's the layout. Can you see? Yeah, let's uh let's see if we get that in, in frame. It's uh, this page here. So they react. They, these are really rough. These are the layouts that I do before the main page. Uh, they react to the noise. This is a tiny shot of them in this kind of like snow bunker kind of place they've dug out to, to, to camp for the night. This is them looking out over the horizon. So I'm looking forward to kind of doing like a, like, like a ice um, landscape in, at night. I want to get my big flat marker pens and do the, do the black textures and make it kind of hopefully feel atmospheric. And the little sister's making too much noise and her big sister's trying to look out for her and kind of keep her quiet. And then finally they look out and again there's just total stillness and quiet in the in the distance but um yeah it's beautiful well 
you say that now, but wait until I draw it and then I'll ruin it. <laughs> then it's going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of pen are you using for this? Uh, this is a Rotring art pen, and it's the only... Uh, let's see if I can get back. Yeah. I've drawn every single page of comics with this pen. Um, and, wow. And, and, and a, a bunch of others, but um, this, is the, this is the pen I've always used to do, like, the line work. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, you know sort of discovered about 20 years ago and it just kind of works it's got a, it's got a nice flow the lines pretty solid you know I'm not a fan of um, like micron pens or those kinds of pens I find them mm -hmm. kind of a bit harsh and too kind of cold somehow this has got a little bit of flow you can see the ink a little bit on the paper um, and I've just always liked them Um, our good friend Chip is, uh, in the chat. He wants to know he when here? the next, he's in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Chip. Um, hey, Chip. He wants to know when the next Diggle Jock collab will be. Ah, uh, yeah. I've been thinking about that because Andy's, um, you know, luckily this, 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 this project I'm doing next year, um, uh, Luckily, I've worked with some really uh, amazing writers over the years. So I've been able to call on them for help with, with writing and, and Andy, Bless his heart, wrote me like seven pages of, of notes and, and advice and, and, and it reminded me that it's been too long since we've done something together. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, my next couple of years are, 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 are busy, but, um, but uh, I'd, I'd love to work with Andy again. He's, he's, he's so good at, uh, at, at sort of understanding the rhythm of a of story, of a, like his scripts are so easy to read. Like the, the, the you know, with some writers, you, you, you have to decipher the script a little bit. Luckily, not, you know, um, you know, I, I tend to work with friends, so we've got a pretty good thing going on. But certainly in the early days, some some scripts you have to kind of decipher a little bit. But but, but with Andy, I can sort of read the script and just see the page uh, straight away, which is like you know, like a. A blessing, something. It's just like it's it, it's 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 the, the the sort of ideal kind of situation where you kind of you know you can kind of um, uh, yeah just 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 see the story. And so so to me that you know there was something about the way that we worked together that clicked. And um, and yeah, it's it's been a few years. I think Snapshot was the last thing we did, which was mm. kind of yeah must be six seven years ago now. So we're kind of overdue doing something together. Also, just a cool guy too. Andy's great. Yeah, he's a great yeah, he's great, great guy. guy. Yeah, but um, oh, as I say, that the last thing we did was, but we, of course, I did do covers for the comicsology title Promete 1313, didn't I? Which he wrote. We'll go and check that out. See, I was getting the plug in, Kiwi, and you're giving me nothing. What the hell? Your arm is covering your, your work. Right now. Oh, is it? Which one? This one? It's, yeah. Oh, so it is. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm not used to this. Is that any better? Yeah. That's good. perfect. Um, Fabio Moon wants to know if the pen is waterproof that you're using. That's no, Fabio. That's the only thing about it. It is not waterproof, and um, it's been a problem over the years. Because I would love to do ink and wash with with these pens, but but you can't. Um, and I've tried putting uh, waterproof ink in, in, into the cartridges and stuff. Like I've bought a kind of a dispenser where you can get ink in, but um, it just clogs up the nib. So it's not, they're not waterproof, which um, is sucks, frankly. Yeah, because it's got a really nice line and the ink is kind of, like I say, there's a nice flow to it. And it would be lovely with, with uh, ink and wash, I think. But um, yeah, no such luck. Let's get the inventors of the pen on the on the phone right. here and. Uh... <laughs> hey, it's Rotring. Rotring. We all know these guys. They can name it after you. <laughs> so 
So I'm drawing some pretty these guys pretty quickly. Um, one of the things I'm doing with these pages is uh, digitally putting kind of white texture over it um, afterwards, um, so I can make pretty broad strokes with 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 the ink and stuff. When I when I want to spot the blacks in a minute, it's going to be pretty kind of broad strokes, um, and then I can hide any mistakes with the beautiful white texture afterwards, and no one will notice. Um, in the chat, Sticks and Stones 187 says, I always think of the amazing cinematic quality of your artwork. I love the work you did on the Losers and Constantine. Wow, thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I love movies as much as comics, really. And um, I remember when me and Andy uh, first did The Losers, um, our kind of goal was to, was, was to make a title that, that, that you could sort of give to someone in the street, you know, that you didn't have to be kind of... A comics literate and kind of like you know be caught up with you know 25 years of, of continuity or whatever you could just give it to, to, to someone in the street to read and hopefully enjoy um, and, and and I think having a kind of the sort of cinematic quality to it was was really important for, for a book like that you know so that's what we kind of set out to do so yeah thank you um, and then another question what genre is the story the super secret story you're working on um I guess it's sci-fi, basically, because it's um, it is set on a nice planet, um, but it's sort of deceiving because you sort of think it's one thing, but then it, but, but it's uh, but there's more to it, basically. Um, and then another question: Where do you find inspiration? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, work every day and some days will be hard and some days will, will be better and some days it will feel like magic and then i'd say those are the days where you where you get a little sense of inspiration but um don't sit around waiting for it you've you know you've just got to put the work in and then and then um you know you, yeah you will get moments where 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 you'll find things in the way that in, in the drawing or the writing or whatever you're doing um that, that, that you wouldn't be able to arrive at without without sort of walking the walk first, without putting those hours in, I think. You know, certainly that's what I've found. Um, um, but, you know, but beyond that, you know, certainly with comic stuff, I try and look, look outside of comics. Um, uh, I don't actually read that many comics anymore, truth be told. So I, I, I feel like all my time is spent drawing them. Um, and um, yeah, you know, movies, magazines, graphic design, poster, you know, Real life, friends, family, you know, everything. Um, I, I, I think, uh, you know, the best sort of uh, writers and artists kind of, you know, you get a sense of the person like behind what they do. And um, uh, so there's nothing really specific, you know, I, I'd say. But um, yeah, but thanks for the question there. Yeah, I, I, I wish I could say, well, if you meditate four hours a day <laughs> and sit, sit cross legged at 8, 12 a.m., you'll, you'll, you'll get divine inspiration and then, and then you'll that you'll be all set for that Tuesday morning. But no, it's pretty, pretty haphazard. I don't know, I mean, maybe some people are different. I, 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 I sort of find I just, um, I come in every day and, and, I, and I try my absolute best every single day. And I feel like that that's all, all we can do really, you know, um, and, and, you know, when and among that, you'll get, like I say, little moments of kind of like, you know, where it feels like everything kind of comes together and, and, and then it feels really special, you know, because you sort of really feel like you've cracked it. You feel like you're, you're doing something that you love, um, and and uh, you know, hopefully, you're 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 you're. Uh, well, in my case, you know, the, the drawing isn't isn't too bad that day. You know, um, uh, it, it it never quite matches what what's in your head, but um, uh, yeah, you know, there's little kind of moments where you can have a happy accident or. That's why I still love drawing on, on paper, actually, is because I, I love the happy accents of ink and the way that pens and ink fall across the page and little things that I'm sure one day digitally we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do. And you can certainly, you know, there's some awesome brushes and things digital-wise, uh, but there's still something about just doing comics by hand that uh, I think is kind of, um, that, uh, yeah, feels good to me. Um, and then let's see, I'm just trying to catch up here. Um, so the genre of the new project is, uh, sci-fi Jasper. Mm -hmm. Um, people want to know if you're going to be doing more Batman. I feel like you'll always be doing more Batman. 
Uh, yes. Batman lives on forever. <laughs> yeah, I have a I have a Batman cover that I, that I was nearly going to ink on this actually. So people get bored. This isn't a very exciting page, but it's the only one that that, that I had ready to go. So if people do want to see me draw a bit of Batman, then then please say, and I'll I can switch over. I don't know how much time we've got, but I can switch over. But yeah, short answer is yeah. There is more Batman on the horizon. I think we have like twenty five more minutes or so. Okay. Um, let's see. Can you talk about how you developed your style? That's a good one. Um, uh, uh, not deliberately, kind of is 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 my answer to that. Sort of, uh, yeah. I mean, one of the nicest things is people kind of say to me now that you know they kind of recognise my stuff. Um, um, and um, that's not something I've really. Well, actually, that's not true. I was, I was going to say it's not something that I've kind of cultivated, but actually, I've been lucky that that kind of. Uh, the, the comic stuff that I have done. Well, one of the one of the amazing things I think about comics is that, to me, all all, all the best guys you can kind of uh, you can see them in their drawings. You know, you know, we all know the guys, and you just recognise them, so, them, them, them instantly. And and um, so my thought was always that that if I, if I can just follow my own ideas and my own, you know, do do what I think looks. Because also, you know, when you start kind of um, especially when you start working professionally, like I remember. I did a couple of years of 2008 AD drawing Dread and that, you know, that was a dream, that was sort of a dream come true in lots of ways. Um, but, uh, you know, I read a lot of Vertigo at the time as well. And actually before comics, I did a lot of painting. So I was sort of super into kind of, you know, late 80s, kind of Kent Williams, John J. Mood, you know, Bill, Bill Sienkiewicz, you know, um, Dave McKean, you know, those guys that sort of, that combined uh, more painterly quality with, with comics and, and uh, I loved that at the time and um oh, and, uh, sorry you guys still see me um I can oh dear <laughs> you can <laughs> there we go um yeah but then but you know I did two as a D for a couple of years but but then I, I remember um uh when I got my first job uh, at Vertigo for DC, and, and they send you the DC paper, they send you kind of you know pre pre sized print at the top DC Vertigo, you know, and um and then suddenly like suddenly it's because you know I sort of find that, that that when you're kind of trying to break in or when you're thinking about doing something or being something, you know, trying to sort of follow some kind of creative pursuit, you know, you're always kind of you're always chasing it, you know, there's, and, and then when you finally get there, you know, you've actually got to do it and you've got to sort of, you know, so I remember putting putting the drawing, the, the, the paper on, on my drawing board with this DC Vertigo at the top and thinking, right, okay, well, I guess this is it. Like, this, this is, this is, this is my sort of, my moment. And like, in, 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 in my head, you know, I sort of thought by that point I'd be more accomplished at this, or, or I thought at that point that I'd be able to do it like this. Or, and of course, they're all kind of abstract ideas that we all have to kind of like, you know, push ourselves forward. But when it's actually time to come to do it, you've just got to do what you know. And, you know, again, like, you know, try and push yourself and kind of aim for something, hopefully half decent. And, um, and, and luckily at the time I was working with Will Dennis, um, you know, after that one issue of Hellblazer, we did the Losers series with Andy and Will was very um, supportive and open to me. Like on, on the covers, I was trying lots of different things because so I, I was into kind of design and, 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 and posters and things maybe away from um, uh, what you might normally see in comics. And I really wanted to bring some of that stuff in, into the Losers and Will was very supportive of that, which was really lucky. And, and, and two things happened. One is, um, uh, people seemed to like the covers, you know, people seemed to like what I was doing. Um, but two, that meant that they were kind of, that set a precedent that I could just kind of, you know, I don't want to say do what I want because that's not the right, that, that's not the right kind of attitude. But, but at the same time, there was a kind of freedom that I, that from in doing that and, and being kind of, and people digging it and, 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 and enjoying it. That, that sort of gave me the license to, do, you know, do more. And then when like Mark Chiarello from, from DC Universe, you know, called and asked if I'd be interested in doing a couple of Batman covers. Like, you know, I, I just took the opinion of the like, okay, well, these are now, I'm, I'm gonna approach these uh, with my own ideas, you know, rather than, because one, one of the things that I think it's such human nature in some ways is when you, you know, it can be quite daunting kind of, you know, drawing these big characters. Um, and like I say, when you first get that first page, that first big commission, it, it can be quite daunting. And one of the things I found 
one of the, is that I sort of tended to, um, it was easy for me to, to think, how should I do this? Like, is the way I'm doing it somehow not good enough? And should I try and do it a bit more like this or a bit more like, like these other covers to fit in with what's acceptable? And I very quickly realized that, that A, that leads to worse work and B, it's just not the right attitude anyway. You know, the world needs people, you know, expressing themselves and doing cool stuff and you know and comics are brilliant for that there's you know they, they, they enable people to do their own thing and have their own ideas and there's a platform for it and and i found after coming from vertigo that that um you know very luckily that was the position that i was in so i just took that forward so so this is a very long-winded way of answering your question that that my style was just that i, I tried to carve my own sort of ideas about how i was going to approach characters and cover design and storytelling and, th and those kind of things and, and I tried not to um, follow uh, you know follow other 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 things you know, certainly when I started out I had I kind of wore my influences way more stronger on, on my sleeve um, but um, yeah you know I've, I've, over the years I feel really lucky that I've been able to just kind of do my own thing really and and, and I guess when people say how do you develop your style that that's what that's what that's what they're talking about it, it's um, it's just you know I remember again Will saying to me years ago, like all you can do is kind of do what you think looks cool. Like that that's all you've got. That's your currency. That that's your kind of you know, not necessarily cool, but you know what I mean, what what is effective. Whatever whatever emotion you want to try and get across with the image that you're doing, that's you know, your own feelings about about how you approach it is your currency in this job. And 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 it, and it's amazing that you know, the, all the I, I I believe all the best people are are the guys that do that, you know. Um the uh there's they're unique they're they're kind of you know specifically their own thing and and they're the they're the people that, that i love the most and um you know uh so yeah that's my long-winded <laughs> my long-winded answer great advice um let's see um benefits of physically drawing comics over digitally drawing them uh, or i guess yeah, like why is that your preference yeah, just just because of the sort of accidents and the way that that when you're physically doing something with, with ink and paper and pen, things occur. You know, you know equally, um, I, I get very envious of, of the control that doing it digitally would do. You know, because um, I use really fat marker pens like the, these guys. They're they're they're, they're huge, and um, you know these, you know they're really big, and 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 you know arguably that there's not not much can you know they can be a little bit haphazard, you know, and and I, I sort of. I would sort of love to, um, to, to, yeah, digitally you can obviously mask off areas and kind of have way more control because I, I love texture and, 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 and stuff in, in work and digitally you can have a way, when you do texture physically, there's always an element of, of accident happen, happening, which I think is, is, is its appeal as well. But, but digitally you can kind of um, control that more. So, but right now, you know, I mean, you know, I, I tend to tweak them a little bit digitally. Like, like I say, for this project, I'm putting on this kind of white texture, which is all done by hand and then scanned in. But I'm, I'm actually putting it on over, over, over the top digitally rather than kind of, um, rather than uh, doing it physically. So, you know, there's benefits to both, but I just, particularly for comics work, I still just prefer doing it by hand. Um, is there a movie you would like to make a poster of? I mean, again, I've done, I've, I've, you know, working with Mondo and and other other companies. I've, um, you know, early on, uh, I would have said there's some John Carpenter movies, and there was Cannibal Holocaust, and there was the Star Wars movies, and um, um, and again, I, I, I actually there, there was there was one one. Uh, one set of movies and which was the Bruce Lee movies um, and uh, when Mondo I remember I was with them in a bar like maybe four years ago at San Diego this would have been this weekend and um, Rob Jones the, the art director there sort of uh, let it slip that they've got the Bruce Lee uh, uh, license so I, I kind of jumped on that so um, Bruce had made like five movies and I've done three posters and I'm still still I've, I've got the other two sketched and planned but it's just finding time to do them so Actually, maybe the Bruce Lee movies would was my would be my answer, but luckily I've, I've uh, got the chance to work on them. Um, how do you keep from over inking pages? Uh, how do you mean? Uh, do you like adding more detail? Do you mean? 
I'm not sure. Can he type in windows or he or she rather type in the real time? Yeah. Page, rather. Um, what do you mean by uh, over inking? I guess. Adam the dream. Oh, it's Adam. I know Adam. Oh, hey, Adam. hi, Adam. Uh, all right. Well, until he puts what he means, we can move on. Um, let's see. How did you get work doing covers almost exclusively so early in your career? Uh, well, I did some at 2000 AD, which was, which was, um, in fact, in one of my submission pieces that, I, that uh, um, I submitted a painting of Judge Dredd, which I put on Twitter again, actually last week, funny enough, um, or this week even. And Andy Diggle was the editor of 2000 AD at the time, and he loved the painting and, and he used that. It wasn't actually for a cover, but for, it was for a back cover. But, but he immediately commissioned me to do covers and, and interiors. Um, um, so then when I went to Vertigo, and actually my, my covers for 2000 AD were painted, <coughs> excuse me, were painted, physically painted. And when I went to, to work at Vertigo, Will, De Will Dennis didn't, wasn't so into my painted covers, actually. And for the losers, he was imagining something kind of sharper and more kind of design you know, led. And, and, um, but I, I, I had just got a Mac, at that, uh, was my first Mac at that point. So I asked Will if he'd give me a chance, um, which he did. And I did like six sketches, very design led sketches for the losers. And then he ended up um, approving five of them for, for print and, and, and five of those became five of the kind of 32 covers that I did. So I guess that kind of just set the precedent. Like I say, then I heard from, from Mark Chirello at DC offering me some Batman covers, um, which, you know, again, people seem to like. So um, uh, I was just lucky, I guess, you know, just, just from the get go, it was kind of part of the thing that I do. You know, I think some people are stronger at covers, some people will be stronger at interiors and their cover design sometimes isn't so strong, but um, I've always I've always loved doing both. So, um, uh, and actually, and, and comics interior wise, the reason I have, you have not seen much from me is because I, like, I'm, I mean, I've drawn five issues of this comic, but it hasn't even been announced yet. So, so when this comes out, you know, the, the next year, um, uh, you know, you might see two or three things from me next year interior wise, but um, yeah, you know, I, I just it's just something that I did from the from the get go, really. So I, I just carried you know, stuck at it. All right, I'm going to take a little question break so we can watch your. Yeah, I'm not doing much, much drawing. <laughs> my, sorry, sorry, guys. And your hand is in the way again. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Tell me. I got gotcha. you. I feel like we should have some smooth jazz or something playing in the background. Well, you know, feel free to, to have you got an instrument, Kiwi? Come on. I, I don't. I, <laughs> I'm fresh out. Is that so you don't smudge it? Which I just did, yeah. Yeah, oh you. <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of marker pens, I keep um, I keep a couple on the go. Some are, ru are run out more more than other ones, um, and and you get a nice kind of like dry brush texture from 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 some that are kind of just slightly run out. And again, it kind of happened by accident, really. But I've ended up incorporating them a lot. Um. 
Um, so Adam clarified, he said, um, as in adding too much black to where things get a little lost in textures. You can never add too much black, Adam. You should keep I agree. As much, <laughs> as much black as you want. Um, so long as you put it in the, in the right place, it's, it'll just look better. Well, it, it's effective anyway, put it that way. Really not a, I don't know whether you guys can see the panel so well, sorry, but that's the way. How long would something like this take? Like if you just sat here and did, did the whole page? Um, well, this series is is uh, two or three characters on a, on a ice planet. So um, mm -hmm. pretty quickly, frankly, um, it's backgrounds that, that, that take the time. Um, so, you know, the actual physical inking time is often not that long. Yeah. And, and, you know, I sort of like to ink with a bit of spontaneity as well. Which means that I naturally kind of um, you know, move the pad around quite quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I don't know. You know, sort of generally a sort of a page a, a day is pretty good going. But I've, but I've been doing um, a couple of pages of this without without too much <coughs> yeah without too much worry. So <coughs> pretty quick for the actual inking. <coughs> Excuse me.
Um, so Mike Rappin wants to know who's doing the colors on this book or is it going? Uh, it's me actually. Um, uh, yeah, I'm coloring it. I, I did it a few years ago on a Hellblazer book. Going to be black and white. Oh, sorry. Say again, Kiwi. I think you broke up there. Um, he just wants to know who's doing the colors on this book or is it going to be all black and white? Uh, no, it's color and, uh, I'm coloring it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I coloured the Hellblazer book I did a while about ten years ago, and uh, the Savage Wolverine story that I um, uh, that I worked on. Uh, Lee Larridge did some colours, and then I kind of finished them off. So it's kind of more like that on this one, but I'm 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 doing uh, I'm I'm doing the colouring as well. Very cool. <coughs> Um, who were your early art influences? Um, one sec. <laughs> I uh, I grew up reading 2000 AD, so it was uh, the best of 2000 AD guys, really. Um, Steve Dillon, Ron Smith, Brian Bolland, Mike McMahon, um, Cam Kennedy. Uh, and then, yeah, a little bit later, you know, um, I said there were some of the painters, the, the painty guys. Um, um, yeah, you know, Ken Williams, Wilson Kevich, sort of, you know, I, I sort of loved how that sort of brought on another level to, 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 the, to comics. Um, and it's changed the landscape a little bit and, and, and we should calm down a little bit from there, I think, as well. But, it, but it's great to have, to, to have the, the, I always feel like they were sort of like, um, just pushing for, 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 for something that was, um, you know, some of those books like Blood and, uh, you know, the obvious ones like, um, you know, Electro Assassin or uh, Arkham Asylum or whatever, Dave McKean stuff, you know, it sort of felt like it was, it was uh, at the time, it felt like it was kind of um, elevating the medium a little bit, I think, you know, um, and, and it was, you know, I, I, I was ju just the right age that that was kind of really exciting to see. So, um, um, yeah, you know, but comics wise, it was really 2000 AD, so discovering 2000 AD over here in the UK when I was kind of a teenager that really, uh, that really um, made me want to do comics. And you know, very lucky to, to be of the, of the generation where, where the guys working on it at the time that I was picking it up were, you know, awesome. You know, they, they were, um, you know, some of them have gone on to become some of the biggest names in, in comics. So, um, um, yeah. I'd, I'd say 2000 AD was was the biggest influence, and really, you know, that, that, that still runs runs now. You know, whenever the, the, the way that I approach storytelling or, or an image always is sort of infused with a bit of what 2000 AD gave me as a kid. I think because uh, you know it, it was it was kind of that that effective at the time. Someone wants to know what kind of beer you're drinking. Um, it's in a nice San Miguel glass, but it's uh, I, I just like lager, so it's um, it's Estrella, which I think is a Spanish lager, I think. Um, but it's nothing fancy. I'm not a huge fan of all these sort of IPAs with bits of orange in and sort of you know hints of mandarin and stuff. I just want a nice, clean, cold beer. Yeah, we can't we can't hear the music that's playing uh, for you guys watching right now. We're literally oh, just is in silence. Is, yeah, is yeah. There there's music playing? playing for them, but we can't hear it. Oh uh, well, there you go. Yeah, there we go. Um, let's see. Uh, talk about working with Alex Garland. Yeah. Um... So Alex Garland is a filmmaker from the UK here. Um, 
he made i first met him through the movie dread which was based on Joe's dread and we since worked on ex machina and annihilation and i'm currently working on his new thing as well which um he did a series called devs for i think it was hulu uh, uh this last year came out um and he's doing another another project which i'm working on with him um yeah alex uh he's 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 great to work with he's um He's sort of like the perfect kind of partner, really, because he, he's 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 very smart. He's very um, he's very uh, particular about what what he wants, um, but he's also incredibly open. And collaboration is one of the most important things to him. Uh, the way the way that that's how he kind of operates. So um, so you have to really, it's it, you know, it, uh, it's really challenging basically to to to. Um, to produce work that that lived up to kind of you know um, what 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 his kind of vision for his his films were, um, and I mean that in, in the best possible way. It was like really challenging, and um, uh, you know I I consider it some some of my, my favourite times. Were particularly working on, on Ex Machina. We'd done Dread, um, and when I worked on Ex Machina, designing Ava the, the robot. Um, I was sort of the fourth person that, that, that saw the script. You know, he, he'd written a couple of drafts, and, and he's got a couple of producers that that they develop stuff together. Um, and, and so he called me kind of before anything was greenlit, before you know any studios were involved, before any of that. You know, and so it was, and he just said, you know, I've, I've got a new project, and 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 you know, the, there's a robot that, that kind of needs needs designing. Um, so for the next sort of six weeks, I'd say. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd work all day and I'd send him what I'd done that day and then he'd, he'd phone at like 9am the following morning and we'd chat on the phone for a while about what I'd done the previous day and then I'd work on it again and then we'd chat the next day and it went on like that for yeah for about six weeks and um, uh, so it was very low key which I, which, I, which I think is really good you know um, uh, you know, we worked on much bigger productions as well which is a different kind of experience you know equally equally good and challenging but there's something about working with Alex which um, I think um a friend of ours, um, Adam Rutherford, a scientist, I remember he, he said that, that he, he kind of, he sort of makes you very loyal to him, which is right, because I, I so respect the way he was coming from, I so respect his kind of take on things that, um, that, that um, yeah, the, 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 the challenge was, was, uh, was, uh, was really good. And, you know, and then you see the, see the film, like I, I didn't, you know, I did that little stuff with that Ex Machina and then I sort of heard it was kind of going into production, but I didn't speak to him for maybe two years. And the next time he, I spoke to him, he, he invited me up to London actually, to, and to pop into the, the edit suite. So I saw some footage and um, the editor had a, like he had his desk and the, and the monitors and, and, and he had a button with, with the visual effects, you know, he had a button which turned them on, on and off. And, um, uh, these are Oscar-winning special effects. We now realise, you know. But but uh, so so Alex, you know, got him to play play a sequence, and it had Ava uh, wearing uh, the actress Alicia Vikander had like a like a bodysuit on. So some of the elements of the body, uh, well, actually, I've got a feeling that actually none of them ended up really being being used. Um, uh, I've, I've got a feeling that it was an entire three D replacement from the VFX side. But still, at the time, you know, she was wearing this kind of bodysuit. You know, and she looked she looked pretty good just wearing the suit but then the editor just kind of pressed the button and 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 you know Ava sort of came alive and you know and she looks she looks she had developed a lot from from when I had done done the work with Alex you know um, Andrew Whitehurst who was the VFX lead at, at, at DNEG um, and the guys at, at the DNEG Double Negative did you know an incredible amount of work making her into a real 3D thing you know but but the concepts that I came up with Alex and the kind of the direction and the kind of tone w was all there, and it, I'll never forget sort of seeing the visual effects for the first time because I've, I've never had that experience before, where something I've drawn, something I've kind of, you know, that's come from the imagination that is presented so, you know, beautifully, kind of thing on on screen. It was it was amazing, and um, you know, that, that's a little example of kind of what it's like working with Alex. You know, one of the reasons she she she, she was so amazing is because he's he he pushes the people that he, he works with. Um, you know, to do their best work, basically. Um, um, so it's yeah, it's been a real pleasure to be honest doing the projects together, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to 
get on to the next one, then there's a couple of characters that I need to design for him, and they're not small characters either. They're they're um, they're uh, they're going to be a challenge, um, but I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I think he's he's great. We have just a few more minutes left. Oh, okay, so I haven't done very much drawing, my guys. I'm I know. So I'm sorry. gonna. I'm gonna stop asking questions for now and just well, let you draw. It's kind of. It's kind of easier. To, I think I told you earlier, Kiwi. I, yeah. I can't. Talk and draw. Some people can kind of draw and then just kind of, kind of, kind of chat away. And I have to either draw or I have to kind of talk. So I'm sorry if anyone's watching and there's not been the most exciting bit of drawing going on. But it's been nice to answer questions for everyone, nonetheless. Yeah, I think this has been great. Um, Eric from Mondo says, Whoa, Eric. He He's says, Jock, I and the rest of your Mondo family miss you. This is Eric. Get back to work. <laughs> uh, thanks, Eric. I miss you guys. Yeah, I've had certainly, you know, um, I've loved working with Mondo as well. It's some of my favorite people. And, um, and we've had some good times at San Diego um, uh, with those guys. We always meet up on the Monday uh, uh, for, for a sort of post con lunch after all the madness has died down um yeah I, I, yeah i'm looking forward to doing more posters down the line as i said earlier comics are, are, are brutal and the deadlines are, are you know really kind of take you away from other stuff but um i, I, I owe eric a few posters so um, i'm looking forward to <laughs> doing to get to getting back to them thanks for watching eric hope you're doing good I was saying about the markers that are slightly run down. Can you guys see that? You get this kind of, uh, yeah, this sort of stuff. So right now I'll use that for the sky in the background because it, you know, like a kind of dark night, night sky against the ice. Can you show us that top panel post like that? Uh, no, I don't like it very much. I'll just show, I'll just, 
<laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm not even convinced that this page is going to see print to be honest with you I, I, I thought I could do a better job of talking and drawing but the truth is actually okay. I'm, not, I'm not concentrating well enough on the drawing I mean that face is kind of okay but I don't know we'll see that's a great face <laughs> um, so I'm going to wrap up here uh, so we can get you on your way um, all right I just want to thank everyone for joining us today and of course you Jock for uh, bestowing your talents upon us for this hour and then all of your amazing answers uh, to everyone's questions in the chat. Um, it's been fun hanging out with you. Um, Thanks, and yeah, of course. And uh, if anyone uh, wants to do comic book trivia night, Chip Zdarsky is hosting that uh, right here at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, which should be a fun few hours of craziness. So definitely check back here then. Um, and thanks, Doc, again. Yeah, th thank you everyone for tuning in and asking questions. And I'm sorry I didn't draw more for you, but um, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>